Corruption Watch is calling on authorities to conduct a thorough and expeditious investigation into the killing of Kluta Murray and his son. The accountant, known for investigating high-profile corruption cases, and his son, Thomas, were driving on the N1 North on Saturday when gunmen opened fire on them. Thomas Murray died instantly while his father passed away from his wounds in hospital. Kluta Murray was involved in many high-profile liquidations, including that of some Gupta companies. Will we ever see justice? Well, we're joined by Karam Singh from Corruption Watch. A very good morning to you, Karam, and thank you so much for your time. I suppose I pose that question to you. Will we ever see justice, and what will it look like? Well, I think uh, that's, a, that's a difficult question. We haven't seen very much justice up to this point when it comes to prosecuting corruption, to prosecuting uh, some of the violent acts that we've seen. We know that uh, there have been some other prominent high-profile assassinations, such as uh, Bobita Diokaran, and we don't know where those investigations are, where that matter is. Um, you know, ideally, justice would see perpetrators being brought, uh, uh, being identified, being arrested, being brought to book, and then those matters being successfully prosecuted. But it seems like this is obviously an unfolding story, and it's it's early in the process. But uh, it's very, very discouraging and 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 quite concerning that we have these increasing levels of violence in, the, in this type of a scenario. Is it a lack of willingness or inability to actually crack these cases and, and bring justice to those affected? I think we, we do have some issues around capacity. Uh, I think the, the overall trust that the public has in, in the ability of law enforcement to effectively investigate these cases and bring them to book is at an all-time low. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know why there would be an issue around uh, the will to investigate these matters or the will to expedite these matters. But at the moment, uh, I think, you know, the, 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 the trust that the public has in, in, our, uh, in the capacity of law enforcement is, is, is not in a good place. Karam, I mean, if you're able to just, in broad daylight, on a busy road like the N1, gun down somebody and then just get away with it when there's you can't you can't tell me that nobody uh, saw what was happening who then do we blame for this particular situation do we blame uh, police presence which many might say that you know the national shutdown on monday proved that police presence cannot be an issue because there were a whole lot more police than i think most South africans had ever seen on the streets so who then do we blame for this the police or perhaps just you know law enforcement and authorities across you know all the spheres I don't think we can blame the police for the fact that an assassination in such a brazen way like this took place. I think we need to look at basically what's going on broadly within society and within our culture around, um, you know, around the fight against corruption, you know, broadly and around the fact that we have a lot of uh, uh, vulnerable persons. So I'm sure Mr. Murray and his son are were professionals who were just doing their job. I don't know that... They, they necessarily uh, had a risk profile where they thought that they, they could be under threat like this. They, they, they weren't whistleblowers. They were just professionals who were doing their job. So we have an, increasingly have a climate of, of intimidation mm. and fear uh, against investigators, against others that are involved in the fight against corruption. I don't think we can blame the police uh, for what happened. I think where we need to put pressure on law enforcement is to ensure that when these things do happen, that they are investigated in, a, in an efficient and an effective way, and that ultimately some consequences flow, and that uh, uh, you know these things are are, are are somehow you know some measures are put in place in terms of the risk profiling so that these things don't happen again. I'm a whistleblower, and I'm sitting on some incredibly important information that I really would like to share, but. I'm seeing, you know, Klutamari, uh, you know, the Klutamari situation, and I'm thinking, Babita Jokaran, as you'd already also mentioned, and I'm thinking, why would I want to do that? I mean, it isn't the good of, you know, the public, it isn't the good for, for my country, but why would I want to put my own life, and even the, life, uh, the lives of my family members, at risk by bringing this information forward? How then do you, as somebody who is for, you know, the ending of corruption, come forward and encourage me as a whistleblower to, to speak up? 
you know, this is this is the big challenge that we're sitting with at the moment. We know that that whistleblowers uh, are are absolutely instrumental. That that corruption happens in in dark corners, and that we're not able to uh, uncover it unless uh, uh, individuals are able to come forward. But at the moment, we have a system, we have a culture, which is disincentivizes people from coming forward. As you say, if people come forward, there's threats against them. Uh, uh, there's potential violence. They, they they face real real challenges. So this is a systemic problem. Government's been dealing with this for a long time. We know that uh, the existing system of protected disclosures is not sufficient. We know that we have an insufficient witness protection system. So you know this is a, a, a an issue of absolute priority in the fight against corruption that we need to create a much more robust. Uh, a, and much safer system to ensure that whistleblowers are protected and they're supported. So, uh, you know, we can only encourage in the fight against corruption that we have an active citizenry, that people are prepared to come forward. But, you know, whether it be from the side of law enforcement, whether it be from the side of government, we need to do much more to put systems in place to risk profile appropriately uh, those that come forward with information and then to be able to give them the proper incentives uh, to disclose information, knowing that they'll be protected and in some cases uh, where necessary that their, that their identities will be protected. We've mentioned, or at least you've mentioned, the uh, issue of capacity within our law enforcement. So then what does a thorough investigation look like and who do we call on? Uh, you know, who do we send a bat signal to to come and actually, you know, see out that uh, thorough investigation? That, that's a really good question. I mean, we're meant to have, uh, uh, you know, a priority crime unit in the Hawks. Um, that they're meant to be the 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 the, the leading, uh, uh, you know, at, at the at the echelon of, of the police. So I think we would look to them to be the ones that would lead us on this. But you know, oftentimes when these things happen, you know, the, in terms of a, a public profiling, in terms of coming forward to the public to say we're prioritizing this matter. Uh, uh, we've, this investigation is ongoing, uh, uh, the, the police are often found wanting. So, you know, we, we would call on the leadership of the police, the leadership of the Hawks, to, to, to give us a public statement, to, 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 to bring us into their confidence that this is a matter that they're on top of, that this is a matter that they're prioritizing, uh, uh, and this is a matter that will receive, uh, um, you know, the utmost attention in terms of ensuring that, uh, you know, our leading investigators, our leading uh, 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 police personnel uh, are, are on this matter. You've somewhat given me an idea of perhaps the answer to this next question I'm going to put to you, uh, Karam, but I'm going to ask it anyway. We, at least you gave the answer with the Babita Djokaran, uh, you know, assertion, but I'm going to ask, do you have any confidence in the fact that the Klutamari case will be brought to book, that somebody will be held accountable and that that person <clears throat> will not be a scapegoat? Um, I, I, it would really be too early to say that uh, that one would have confidence. You know, I mean, I'm I'm not coming on here to 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 put a broadside against the police or to say that the the police are incompetent or incapable. I think I think we have a lot of uh, competent and, and strong people, obviously, uh, uh, within the police and within the leadership. But at the moment, uh, you know, based upon the past track record of dealing with these cases, I think it's fair to say that. Uh, that confidence isn't particularly high mm. and that, you know, until we see something really happen in this matter, that, uh, you know, that we're not sitting back holding our breath. We can only but hope that we're not finding ourselves with a Senzo Meiwa case, with a Babita Jokaran case, with a Klutamari case that is not going to see its finality, and many other cases that do not have this kind of high-profile attention on them. We can only but hope now that as we've seen the capabilities and strength of our police force, as we did last week, Monday, that they can show that they do know how to do their jobs and do their jobs thoroughly. Karam, I'll leave it there with you, and thank you so much for joining us here on the South African